bet you Mustang guys are really glad to see this back. Well, that's too bad. We still gotta wire it up, finish the roll cage, and find some awnings for those tires. But you'll see that next week. The famous Brent Buttrey's finishing up the metalwork on the Le Mans, then the mud starts to fly. Now after ranting and raving like Rosie O'Donnell, I got my way. Auto Body Color and Supply came through with these custom colors for our Le Mans, and because they're new, we got to name them. Santiago Gold and Buttrey Black. But we're not doing that today, either. Last weekend I hit some local events, got some great ideas, saw some radical rides, beat up a troublemaker, and got an update on some current trends. But what really caught my eye was the variation of rear ends. I mean, rear suspensions. Looks like some old styles are back in play, some for looks, most for performance. So today, we're gonna use three sets of frame rails to show you four different types of rear suspensions. The good, the bad, the ugly of each one of them, which one would work best for your project, which one could really screw you up, and the basics on how to build them. Before the use of any suspension arms, all vehicles use leaf springs. Not the best ride. The more weight you put in it, the worse it got. The birth of coil springs changed everything. Through the forging process, coils could be made to compress differently under various loads, giving a consistent ride no matter what you were doing. Suspension geometry would never be the same. This is a truck arm suspension. It was originally used in 62 to 72 Chevy trucks. Two very long triangulated arms were the norm until the truck was redesigned in 73. These simply took up too much space. So the room that they consumed led to their demise. Too bad, the ride was solid, it was predictable, and it was easy to adjust. The big three never made them again, but the aftermarket did. These come from Spryker Racing, and they're an exact duplicate of originals. And I do mean exact. And they come in a variety of different lengths. Why would a racing manufacturer even build these? Because the guys in NASCAR demand it. And it's all for the same reasons that we spoke about earlier. But it's probably the ease of adjustment that piqued their interest. You ever seen a car pull into the pits? A guy jabs a ratchet in the back window and starts cranking. He's adjusting the spring height which is directly tied to the truck arm. It can't get no easier than that. They're also easy to adapt to your project. For mock-up, we're using this bolt-and-go 9-inch Ford for master power brakes, 31 spline axles, and a true track posi from Detroit Locker. This beefy housing and disc brakes to stop it. The bracket location depends on the length of the arms you order. Longer for a better ride, but keep in mind where your center of gravity is. Spryker offers his cross member as an option if you're too lazy to make your own. General rule of thumb, if the cross member's under the front seat, your arms are too long. Now, on the original trucks, the springs were mounted right here. On some applications, I've seen the shock in front of the rear end or it could be mounted behind. But because of all of this space and modern technology, airbag installation is a breeze. This rear suspension setup requires a panard bar, but I prefer a sliding wishbone. It allows the rear end to move equally on both sides, a must when you're running airbags. It's nice to see guys reusing a lot of this older technology, but along with the good comes the bad. These truck arms take up a lot of space. NASCAR guys don't care about where their exhaust dumps out. They put it in, they go about their business, but on the street, it's a different story. You may not want that exhaust at the back of your door making all that noise. I installed a set of these on a car once for a guy and he insisted that the exhaust came out in a stock location behind the rear end. That meant that I had to cut out the whole floor, reconfigure everything to fit just so I could get his exhaust where he wanted it. But for him and a lot of other guys, it's well worth it. Cars couldn't afford to lose all that space because huge trunks and luxurious living quarters were top selling points, and a triangulated four bar made it possible. It too uses bottom bars, except much shorter. The panard bar is replaced by two top bars running at an angle. Now you can see where geometry comes into play. With the proper lengths and the proper angles, it's designed to keep the axle travel as straight as possible. 
Modern technology improved on that. These arms from Global West are adjustable, so you can change the pinion angle of the rear end. So if racing's your goal, traction can be improved. For you low riders or high rollers, your U-joint angle can be corrected. When you're building this from scratch, set your arms as level as possible at ride height. This is the most popular setup for current car building, and the aftermarket knows this. You can find an endless number of designs and kits just about anywhere you look. The downside, it's limited travel, isn't suited for subclasses of racing. After the break, I'll show you what is. Find some suspension for your rear end because we're back on ours. I've shown you two of the four setups so far. The old-fashioned truck arms and the more current triangulated four bar. And a little on how to fab them into your project. Something to help you out with that, these custom rails from AutoWeld. They're one of the few companies that's manual bending square tubing. And it's a crazy process. They use a slip die actuator inside to keep the tubing from collapsing. And they'll make them to your specifications. They're not just for looks, they're stronger that way. Here's the rail I made, but just for the demonstration of this next setup. And it all starts with this extremely lightweight racing housing for Mosier Engineering. It's designed to accept the center section for a nine inch Ford. Now how a rear end reacts under a hard launch can make the difference between prize money or poverty. And there's a lot of science involved. And the way to take advantage of that is with a four-link setup. There's an infinite number of adjustments that you can make with this setup. The whole goal is to get the weight of the vehicle to work for you. You want to get as much weight on the rear end as possible for maximum traction. But you don't want a wheel stander either. You can move these bars around to find a sweet spot. Fabbing them in is simple. Brackets on the housing and more on the frame. You should start out at a neutral setting. Level at the bottom, center hole on top. Simple on a table, a little bit more involved in a car. All this tunability could be a blessing, but it can also be a curse. There's thousands of theories on how to adjust one of these. Here's mine in 30 seconds or less. Last year, I put one on Mike Galley's Mustang project, then tuned it in. On the initial launch, it pulled some to the right. So I shortened the top bar on the passenger side just a bit. That straightened it out, but there's not enough lift in the front for traction to the rear. Lowering both top bars in the front moves the pivot point behind the center of gravity, forcing more weight to the rear end during the launch. More lift, better traction, we'll keep it straight and off the rails. Yet another factor we didn't discuss, adjustable coilover shocks. We got these from AFCO. This top adjustment controls the rebound. That means how fast the shock wants to get back to its fully extended position. This bottom one is for your compression. It controls how fast or slow the shock compressed. Yet another adjustment, your spring. You can tighten it or loosen it or even get different spring rates. Add these to the equation and you can understand just how complicated a four-link can be. Now for you street and show car guys, you set it and forget it. And they're a cool addition to your ride when covered in chrome. Now there's another version of this and it's a whole lot simpler. This is a four bar setup, not a four link. It's extremely limited in adjustment. Threaded rods at one end is all you get. The bars run parallel to each other. The bracketry is simple. They don't take up a lot of space. They're ideal for street rod building. So there you have it. Four different rear suspension setups to choose from. Now there's others out there, but these are by far the more popular ones. The bottom line is, you don't have to live with what your project came with. A little refabbing, time, and homework are all good reasons to hide out in your garage. Now after the break, that event I told you about, you're coming with me. I don't know about you, but I try to get to as many local car events as I can. Sometimes I just stay home and make biscuits. But when the good guys are in town, I'll eat fast food. Believe it or not, they let me out in public every now and then. 
Today I'm hanging out at the second annual Good Guys event here in Nashville, Tennessee. And if you've ever been to one of these things, you know it's more than just a car show. It's a party on 10,000 wheels. We've got uh, over 2,000 cars here this weekend and it is a blast. If you're just looking, there's a ton of eye candy here. Or if you're ready to get serious about your ride, there are plenty of vendors here to give you the 411 on their latest products. Live music, loud cars, and cheerleaders. It's safe for the whole family. Well, almost. You always have to watch out for that one bully. Help me! No more clowning around. We're gonna go see some cars. The thing I really like about this show is that every car drove through the gate. No trailer queens here. There's no excuse these days for pulling your car around. The LS motor is really popular as of late. They make a ton of power. They're all aluminum and they're small cubic inch. 364 and they're bumping 400 horse some of these things. And that's added a crate. So you get really good bang for the buck. Plus, it's dependable. Hit the key, drive it away. That's what it's all about. If you need more than 400 horses, then listen up. LS2 671, durability at its finest. Machine tech, way to go. This kit ships complete to your door, along with the promise of 600 horses. But you don't need a fancy motor to have a good driver. Got a 385 straight motor, uh, 700 R4 transmission. These bubble tops might be getting rare, but that doesn't stop Rob Overhaul from putting his on the road. It's a driver. And it's been everywhere from the shores of the Great Lakes to the beaches of Florida. Something tells me that the odometer on this Impala has a few more clicks in it. Putting the car in the street is where it belongs, and building it yourself definitely takes it up a notch. This old 32 3 window not only hits the road, but the owner did all the work in his two car garage. A lot of guys blow a wad of money farming out their work, but if you take your time, you can do most of this stuff yourself. There's a ton of tricks you can do to get that look that you're going for. One of my favorites, bagged and dropped. When you lower a car, the car actually looks longer, and it's not. That's what makes them so cool. Let's look at this for a second. The bumper's on the ground. Now that's what I call parking lot. Let's decapitate a few ants just because we can. And then the beauty of the air ride, you can just raise it up and drive away. That's what I'm talking about. Then, there are some cars that just need to be left alone. Like this Studebaker. It's no shiner, that's for sure. But it makes up for it with character. And guess what? It's a driver. They're all drivers. Oh, I drive on the street, but we drive it everywhere. Right? He drives it on the street? Yeah, we drive it all over. That's what this game is all about. If you're not driving your car, you're wasting your time. So get out there and log some miles on it. If you've never been to a good guys event, get to one. I had a blast. Signed some autographs, took some pictures with fans. Hey, I even got, well, you know. Not bad for a day's work, but I've still got more work to do after the break. Stick around, we'll be back in a few. You can't do a show on rear suspensions without talking about what turns those axles. Now we dabbled in the needs for street and strip, but here are a few options to go along with that. The standard differential only turns one wheel, and we all know it's not cool to do the one wheel peel. So this is what those engineering nerds came up with. They called it a posi. Now we could have used high tech graphics or detailed drawings to explain this, but this is my way. Right tire, left tire. When you're going down the road, you have equal power. When you make that left turn, the right powers up to compensate. When you make the right turn, the left compensates. The joy of this, when you make that hard left, you have equal power all the way through. And that's exactly how this True Track Posse from Eaton works. It's perfect for the streets because the transitions are nice and smooth. A more aggressive Posse for performance cars is this Detroit Locker. It uses teeth to lock everything in place instead of clutches to handle the high torque. The toughest of all for racing only, a spool. These extremely strong gears are connected directly to the axles. No left or right variations, just equal torque to both sides. The best part is, is you can install one of these in just about any housing you might have. So the world is yours. 
I'm done edumacating you guys on how I look at a rear end. You know, there's a bit of a rumor going around work that I'm a loose cannon and that I'm really tough to work with. So one of the guys put together this little piece. You be the judge of it and tell me what you think. Later. <coughs> camera guys have to go through sometimes. Rob, we're turning! Shut up the Don't fall, Rob! A couple, you know, a couple snaps with the dyno. Ready? Ready, Rob? Wubba! Wubba! Mark, that's the camera. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> cramping, I'm cramping! <laughs> Turn and look at the car. Look at the car. Look at the car. I'm cooling you off. I'm taking care of my cameraman. We talk and we're talking like this, okay? It's okay to look over there. Wubba! Wubba! <laughs> punch it! Punch it, it'll go! It's okay to look over there. It's gonna mess up the car. Yeah. <laughs> Do the hustle. <laughs> the hell ain't got nothing on me! <laughs> wow, wait till we bring that back to the school. <laughs> It's okay to look over there. Look at the look at the car. Oh! Look, three look. clowns! Back up camera, back up, back up. Stop, but don't go. Okay, we're gonna film. <laughs> you think I made you pull over so I can just chit chat? Well, I thought somebody told you, like, I'm actually, I'm, you know. I'm, I'm done. I'm gonna stand over here. Maybe they wanna talk to me. <laughs>